Hey everybody, this is Alan Fine. I'm here with Sheila Wiley. Who, what's your title now? Uh, Chief Marketing Officer for the Americas for Visit Britain. Oh, that's right. That's that's what it was. Yeah. Nice to see her again. We've talked to her before. We're here at uh, Destination Britain North America in San Francisco, and we're going to talk about co-op campaigns on Insider Travel Report. Sheila, nice to talk to you. It's great to see you again, Alan. So you just did a presentation, and uh, let's let's inform the travel advisors what's going on and how this benefits them. Sure. Well, um, we recently did a test pilot of a campaign um, for working with smaller industry partners throughout Britain um, to promote, you know, Britain to experience seekers, our audience, people who are ready to travel, have passports, um, are looking or searching to go to England or Europe. Um, we did this test campaign where we actually invested money up front um, to build up this audience. And then we gave an opportunity to partners to be able to invest in the campaign with their only own mini campaigns retargeting that audience. Some of the partners- more affordable. Exactly, because usually tourist offices do big, huge campaigns with big global partners, either airlines or other destinations or uh, an OTA, for example, an online travel agency. Most of our industry partners within the country and even our international travel trade, some tour operators that you may be familiar with, they don't have the budget or means to be able to do these big, huge national campaigns. What's of value to them is we're already in the market marketing, we're building up these audiences. We give them then an opportunity to do a little mini campaign retargeting this audience who's already primed. They're already thinking about going to Britain. Now they just need to know what to do when they get there. So some of our partners included Hilton Hotels, which are all over the United Kingdom, England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland. Um, West Midlands Growth Company in Birmingham, Visit Wales, uh, visit Brighton, visit Kent, some attractions within uh, London. So we really did a whole regional approach so partners could come in at varying levels that they were comfortable with. Um, and then we gave them their own mini campaign reports afterwards so they knew exactly how many people were engaging with their content. Um, you know, uh, they could retarget them at any time. It's first party data for them. How does it benefit travel advisors? Is that we are Con, or we are pitching to them while they're just in the beginning stages. So we're doing the inspiration part. We're getting them to consider Britain. Now they're considering Britain. The partners come come in. But then, who are they going to book with? Travel advisors. So that's how so, kind of like. So this is uh, this has been going on for a year, and actually, we're about to start the next phase. Or how, how's yeah, it actually work? Actually, we started in March of this year. We ran it from March to May. Um, so Visit Britain using its brand platform, uh, the great campaign, which is come see things differently. Um, we started that in March and then the partners came in and retargeted in April and May. It was very successful um, in terms of bookings, flight searches, hotel nights, um, and imp impressions and engagement uh, and dwell time, all sorts of K KPIs that you'd use for a digital campaign. Because of that, we are now going to invest more money into this, but we're going to go into market earlier. So October, November, Visit Britain will be doing their Come See Things Differently campaign. Partners then will be able to come in in January and February. And everyone knows, European travel knows there's a lot of people out there looking to travel to Europe and to Britain in particular during that time period. So, you know, again, it's going to be even more valuable for the industry, but it's getting that awareness out of places within Britain that they people might not know about. So very, people are very familiar with London, but not necessarily outside of London, or just there's the honeypot destinations that they might know about. This gives opportunity for someone like a destination like Glasgow. Everybody knows Edinburgh. What do they know about Glasgow? Not as much. So it gives an opportunity to educate. Um, same thing with you know Wales, Birmingham, um, Brighton, you know, sometimes I think we think everybody knows all these things, but they don't necessarily, you know, because the repeat visitation to London is very high, which is fantastic, also to Britain. Right. Um, so we know there's a huge audience that is wants to come back to Britain. And I have to do a shameless plug because we're now the number one destination for Americans traveling out overseas internationally. So, so is this something that the travel advisor just benefits without doing anything or is there some way they can uh, look it up or, or get more information? Well actually 
um, we are just about to launch a new industry uh, website. So visitbritain.org, um, it's Travel Trade Dedicated, is launching next week. Um, so, you know, I invite the travel advisors to take a look at that. Um, we also do a travel trade e-newsletter, and we'd be happy for people to, again, they can sign up on visitbritain.org. Um, we s will send them all, the, you know, information about new destinations, new products, hotels, you know, annual events coming up. Uh, one of the things that I think advisors might be interested in is, um, and they probably already know, but just from our perspective, it's the 80th anniversary of D-Day in June um, next year, so 80 years since 1943, which is hard to believe. So not just um, Americans, but Canadians, Australians, you know, certain markets. Um, people have said to me, oh, but that was all in France. I'm like, no, that was when they launched. D is the day. And, you know, pe loads of American servicemen were based in southern England training for 12 to 18 months before they went in, I think it was Operation Overlord. Right, right. And um, so they have these really fond memories of it. Now, there's not that many of, of the servicemen alive. You know, they're, they're in their late 90s and stuff, but their families are coming. And th there's a lot of youth and student who are, are still really interested in World War II history. And it's still a huge motivator for travel. Uh, from North America to, you know, um, combining England actually and France. So, you know, big year for that. Liverpool in the 60th anniversary. That's right. So Liverpool, it's the 60th anniversary. I think, it, is it Hard, hard, day's, night. hard day's Night? I know you're a big Beatles fan. <laughs> so it's quite a few anniversaries coming up. There's the 200th anniversary of the first Cadbury's Chocolate Store oh, in I'm Birmingham. <laughs> so they've got a lot of uh, activities there. And in fact, there's an a, a experience called Cadbury's World that you can go to in Birmingham. Um, of course, film and TV, huge, loads of, you know, uh, films and TV shot in Britain, and it really is a motivator for travel. But things is like all this part of the co-op. In other words, you, you come for this, and then you use these partners. Yeah, well, in terms of we focused on a few themes. One was outdoors. Another one was film, food, and drink. Um, and another was icons. Icons with a twist. So you know, we're known for amazing architecture, royal history, castles, palaces. Um, but there's also the modern edge of it. So you might see, you know, encouraging people to do the outdoors and do paddle boarding on the Thames River with the Tower Bridge right behind it. Um, you know, we're going to Edinburgh, going to the Fringe Festival and seeing all the new kind of creative theatrical entertainment. Um, there's actually a direct connection between the Fringe Festival in Edinburgh and West End and New York Broadway. They exchange um, shows quite often. One will start in one place, end up in another. Um, and this time, the next phase of it, we're going to change some of the themes a bit. And one of the themes will be film and TV. So we'll be talking about destinations where films have, uh, or TV programs have been filmed. And sometimes people don't realize they've seen Britain on TV and it's not a set, it's actually real. So good examples like Harry Potter and that famous train in Scotland, or, um, you know, Bridgerton. All it's driven demand to go to Bath. Um, Downton Abbey, of course, really has gotten people interested in New Yorkshire and the countryside. One of my favorite TV shows is called Shetland, which is it, it's driving tourism all the way up into Shetland Islands, which are actually closer to Norway than London. So it's got a bit of a Scandinavian feel. And of course, Outlander, who can forget that. Um, but you know, even all throughout the country, we have these. Um, film locations, you know, Bond obviously is really, really popular, but Birmingham with Peaky Blinders in Wales, we've got Sex Education, and of course, Welcome to Wrexham, which has been a huge hit. Um, not just the TV program with documentary with Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhoney bought Wrexham Football Club, but there's huge amounts of fans now all over America who want to go to Wrexham in Northern Wales because of this program. What's great about that is that's what we can leverage to get people to come to Wales and to come to England for, a, you know, just like Premier Leagues have been doing, you know, to go to see Man City or Man United and Manchester and Liverpool and Everton and all the London teams, Chelsea, Arsenal, you know. So what's great about, like, film and TV and football is it gets people outside to other parts of Britain. And then when they're there, like you mentioned Liverpool, 
Liverpool Football Club, huge amount of American fans, but it also has the Beatles heritage and musical heritage. Um, so, you know, you've got Strawberry Fields and you've got the Cavern Club, you know, so there, there's so many things. We, we, we really want to encourage people to kind of explore a bit more, especially if you're, you're, you've come to Britain before. Yeah, yeah. You haven't seen it all, trust me. <laughs> uh, is there anything else about the co-op that we need to inform them? Well, I think, you know, um, as we're going to be expanding it a bit more is, you know, they when we launch this uh, next year, I, can't, I don't have much to say about the film and TV campaign yet because it's under de development, but we'll definitely be promoting it through the travel trade and give, you know, the, the content, the, ins the inspiration for clients. I mean, I just had... Uh, friends of a family who traveled for five weeks through Britain. I've watched it all on social media. And the trip wasn't to go to film and TV locations, but they ended up doing it because they had seen them. So they did all these Outlander locations. They went to Bridger to Bath to see Bridgerton. They went to High Clear Castle to see where Downton Abbey was filmed. And then they you went they, to- They came here not really knowing what they were gonna do, and then they went, oh my oh, goodness. Yeah, they had it all oh. planned. But it was interesting how it's now part of everyone's trips. Um, I just I recently went to Jordan, and, and um, I'd always wanted to go to Jordan, go to like Wadi Rum, the desert, and a number of places. I also went to Jerusalem, but of course I had to go to Petra because Petra. I mean, it's stunning Roman, uh, you know, ruins. But it was in Indiana Jones. That's right. Then you had Star Wars in Wadi Rum. Right. So, of course, they pointed that out. And the guide pointed out where Lawrence of Arabia went through this famous canyon. So movies, you know, are, are really actually helping to drive visitation to places that are lesser known. So Beyond have, London. Yeah. Uh, you know, and London, loads of movies, obviously, well, and television programs and films like stop them from shooting there go to the outskirts <laughs> but you know what Notting Hill still driving people to Notting Hill 25 years later the interesting thing is just to give some context to how it can help drive visitation other places is Ted Lasso filmed in Richmond Richmond is technically it's part of London but it's a little bit on the you know further out in London so you kind of have to go out of your way to get there but it's this quintessential beautiful and like English town or village on the Thames River, a different part of the Thames, which is a lot narrower, but it, it's quintessential. I went there uh, just last year. I'd been there many years before, but Ted Lasso reminded me how much I liked it. Yeah. So I went back and it's a place that has a village green with cricket playing and people <laughs> rowing on the, you know, on, on the Thames and having rosé out on, on, on the river cafes. But it's also um, where you've got Kew Gardens famous gardens yes, and yes, Kew yes, Palace. Yes, yes. And then on the way there is Fuller's, the famous brewery, and you can go on brewery tours. So get it, if you've been to London already and you've seen a lot of the you know key iconic um, places, consider exploring other areas because there's so much to offer. So not just throughout Britain, but we want to get you to see more of London, different parts of London. You know, some of the up coming places like Shoreditch and and um, Bermondsey and, you know, going to see the markets. I mean, food and drink is unbelievable in Britain. Um, you know, and traditionally we haven't been known for that. No, no. But, no. you know, and if you like cocktails, it's a huge cocktail culture, a lot of farm to table. They had farm to table before people invented farm before to table. farms and tables, yes. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Fish to table, right. farm to table, right, right, right. Um, you know, uh, so, you know, and the markets, the food markets are amazing. And coming up soon is, you know, the Christmas markets. Um, you know, Europe's really well known for them, and uh, Britain is part of Europe still. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, awesome. but they don't realize that there are market, Christmas markets all over, uh, whether they're in Wales or England or Scotland, in London itself. So, you know, one of my favorite places is Borough Market um, in London, where it's just unbelievable. The food, all different kinds of uh, cuisines. London's a very multicultural city, so you've got cuisines from all over. And you know how people are, have a lot of dietary um, restrictions these days, or by choice. And Britain now is, you know, very vegan-friendly, gluten-free friendly. So, you know, it's... Um, the, you know, the offerings have really expanded quite a lot. Um, and during, the, you know, that more like the summer and spring and fall, um, I would encourage um, 
people to go to the vineyards, believe it or not. England has a lot of vineyards, England and Wales. Um, there's about over 600 of them. And uh, English sparkling wine is really giving uh, France and Champagne a run for its money. Wow. Uh, well, we, we started with co-op and we went all <laughs> over. Way we over. took a big turn. <laughs> but 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 these are all great yeah. ideas for travel advisors to utilize. Yeah. Uh, it, it's certainly, there's, there's so many ways to package Britain and uh, we encourage you to, to investigate it more. Are you going to go to where? What website? Um, visit Britain. Oh, but dot org yeah. um, and, but I we, you know another thing that I think I should have mentioned earlier is just Britain is popular is so popular right now but we really are lucky when it comes to connectivity and routes 31 gateways from the United States um, if you want Boston seven airlines fly into the UK from Boston alone um, new flights that have either relaunched or uh, new entirely or like another you know Austin uh, Tampa, Denver. Uh, I'm trying to be careful and not mention the airlines because I'll get it mixed up. But, um, you know, obviously we've got Delta, Virgin, British Airways, United, Norse, JetBlue, I think I'm uh, American. So, it, you know, all the major carriers basically. Yeah. Oh, and Aer Lingus. I knew I'd forget one. We have Aer Lingus going to Manchester. Yeah. So. No. Don't be upset if we forgot you, but I think we got them all. Yeah. Anyway, I want to thank you for giving us all your time and and your knowledge, and uh, and I look forward to I, I I I'm I'm excited, and you'll so you'll you're going to have the next yeah. the next version of this coming up. Yeah, coming up soon. We also have a couple campaigns going out um, later in the year, so those will be bigger digital campaigns. But this is the opportunity for us to, to help the industry. That's part of our job is to connect them and give them the tools no, to be able no. to promote to the U.S. market. Boy, are you guys ever supported. Anyway, thank you again. And this is Alan Fine for Insider Travel Report.